From the Foundation Studio right here in the Lexi Back Bay in Pico, Mississippi, welcome to Super Talk Outdoors, where we celebrate every single Monday the world-class outdoors of the state of Mississippi and the people who are so passionate about it. Or should I say for today's show, the people who are so obsessed with it. We'll come back to that in just a second. Super Talk Outdoors is brought to you by the Foundation. They are working to protect our outdoors heritage every single day. You know, since we did our show last week, the first show of Super Talk Outdoors, I've heard from so many people. They really enjoyed my conversation with Jimmy Primos and Brad uh, Ferris. And then I played a segment for my Coast View session with Will Primos. If you missed that conversation, you can go do a search in Google or whatever search engine you use, Super Talk Outdoors, and it will come up. Or you can go to your favorite podcast and just search Super Talk Outdoors. One of the, a couple of the friends I heard from with Tom and Coy Pina, uh, they're old friends from Southern Miss. They actually live in Miami now, but they have a hunting camp in Strong, Mississippi, where they spend a lot of time this time of year, uh, as, as you would expect they would naturally. Uh, it was great to hear from you guys, Tom and Coy. So as I promised last week, I want you to meet uh, my friend and my producer, Cal Curley. Uh, he's the producer of Super Talk Outdoors and also the producer of Coast View, the show that I do down here on the coast. Uh, so it's a, it's a show focused on coastal Mississippi. So if you like the coast, do a search on Coast View. By the way, view means the visual perception of a region. Anyway, good morning, Kyle. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How about you, sir? I'm doing fine. So I know you probably recognize that voice. He does IT operations. He does voice for multiple radio stations. And he does the music in the Superdome during the Saints games. He's, he's literally a living renaissance man, and he loves to fish. Don't you, buddy? I do. I got a text from my son this morning, said, hey, can we go fishing Wednesday or Thursday this week uh, in the afternoon? Pretty sure he wants me to check him out of school, but no, we'll wait till he <laughs> go and eat. <laughs> I love to hear the stories of Kyle and his son. They they fish all along coastal Mississippi. But man, that time with your son, buddy, I mean, that's that's what the outdoors is all about, isn't it? It really is. I enjoy the heck out of it. Uh, you know, we don't get to really spend that kind of time together anywhere else because just the nature of things, there's all we're always in a different setting. But when we go fishing, it's just him and I, and he likes to make fun of me for just simple things that I do. And I make fun of him for losing fish and it's a good time. <laughs> kind it of is, the same it, thing that you probably enjoy with your kids, right? It is for sure, man. You saw, we had a great trip to Horn Island this weekend. You see that? I did. I did. There were some uh, beautiful pictures. Yeah. Did you grab any of those? I did. Yeah. Let, look, what, what happened is Friday night, one of the things about living on the coast and living on the water fr Friday night, we looked at the, at the uh, weather forecast for Saturday morning and we decided Wow, man, we've got to go. So we hopped in the boat and we ran to Horn Island. The, the sunrise was absolutely beautiful. And uh, Horn Island, when, you know, when you're there in that setting, any of the coastal islands off, off, off of Mississippi or the backwaters of coastal Mississippi, I find myself often thinking to myself, is there a better place to fish anywhere in the world? The sites are incredible. And the fishing, my goodness, the fishing is absolutely incredible. So my son Jordan and his friend Leland and I went and we just had a great time and they caught some speckled trout and redfish and flounder and some white trout as well. It was just a great trip, but a great reminder, man. You know, Mississippi has so much to offer. No matter where you enjoy the outdoors, it's here for you to enjoy. Anyway, Kyle, thank you, my friend, for all you do for me and, and Super Talk. You bet. I appreciate it. So, uh, look, I said this so many times before, there's something beyond exhilarating when you immerse yourself in Mississippi's outdoors, you know, I can, I can literally feel my blood pressure drop and I feel like my mind is more creative when I'm out there. And for one thing is for sure, as Kyle and I were just talking about, we feel closer to our family and our friends. We feel closer to God. I told Cuz Strickland, who we're about to introduce in just a second before the show started, that uh, for someone who doesn't quite get it, they just need to walk out deep into the woods and sit down and just let silence happen and that's the way to really understand the connection between nature and god and yourself i can't think of a better way to do it but whether you're taking a deep breath of the coastal mississippi salt air like i get to do every morning when i'm not at my place in the delta or if you're you know just breathing that crisp you know air of northeast mississippi or in the mississippi delta with that alluvian soil and all that you know the miles and miles of farmland when you take it in man it just kind of it kind of takes you over um you know, Mossy Oaks' Toxie Hayes had something to say about it. He said, fresh, 
and clear when he talked about the early spring in, in a bottom land. A bottom land, really, you could go just about any bottom land in Mississippi, and you sense that this fresh and clean and clear. And he went on to say it's such a rush to be out in, uh, out in it this time of year. Uh, there's a shock and awe of the turkey gobble, especially down here in the south where it just explodes. It does something to you. It's glue, nature and God and family. That's what Toxie has to say about it. And frankly, he, he could not be more right. I mean, enjoying the outdoor in Mississippi is part of our heritage. It's literally in our DNA. So today we're going to spend the entire hour talking to my friend Toxie Hayes and his partner in crime, just like Kyle is my partner in crime, Cus Strickland from Mossy Oaks. Anyway, guys, welcome to the second edition of Super Talk Outdoors. Well, it's an honor Thank to you. be here. Hey, I, I watched the first one. And man, that was pretty special. You're the right guy for the job, Ricky. I promise you. Uh, I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So, where you are, are you located right now, Toxie? Single. Where am I located? I'm at our family camp right now. Actually, my granddaughter's birthday is today, and got a bunch of them down here, and they we decided to come to the country for her birthday. Headed back to civilization later, to, you know, later in the morning. I almost came back. Uh, but I decided to do it from here. We got the technology stuff straightened out. But I have yeah, to say, yeah. you were singing from our hymn. That opening was just verbatim how we feel about that. Now you hear an airplane coming over, so you know I'm on a screen porch. <laughs> That's okay. Because where are you? Where are you doing this show from today? Oh, I'm, I'm at downtown West Point in my my little. We call it the Camo Cave. It's where I we started a podcast here, and they have one out on the highway too. But this is uh, this is my ha happy place up here, the Camel Cave, we call it. That's uh, that's so great. You know, Taxi, as I sort of prepared for this show, I've known your story for a long time, but you know, there's something about you know having sort of the the quiet time to think about it, to 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 read your story, to study your story, to be reminded of your story and how important it is. Someone said of you that you're one of Mississippi's greatest entrepreneurs. They also said that you're a conservationist. You probably probably feel as more you know more strongly about the conservationist title than you do the entrepreneur uh, title but when you look back on it you think about your time your father's inspiration mr fox's paw paw the grandkids call him your time with cuz and what you've been able to do with this multifaceted company that we're going to talk about in a few minutes when you look back what stands out the most to you i mean everything's as far as i'm concerned everything's a miracle and i know uh, you know, I could go a hundred directions from what you just asked, but it's the, you know, mostly the people, uh, you know, it did, it did start with my dad and as a kid and the thing, you know, we're kind of all programmed as a child in different ways. I grew up on a farm and, you know, uh, even, you know, two, three, four years old, just a wild buck running in the weeds. And so, you know, and then as soon as I could even, you know, maybe five and six, I started going outdoors with him, but it started with him, but it, it, it took a quantum leap when, People like Bill Sugg and Cuz and God, Bob Dixon, God rest his soul, came along and and just it's not me and and man, I'm not doing that to deflect anything. I'm just telling the truth. It's a culmination of everybody here uh, in the brand. And you know, from from day one, we kind of wanted to be we kind of have an outside in philosophy, and that's that servant spirit, you know, and that's the way we want to be with all our whatever consumers we do have. And so, you know, we just wanted to be. For everyone, and, and honestly, the 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 mission statement for all the companies collectively under the brand is still as simple as connecting human beings with nature. Everything we do points back to that. I mean, even I see the shirt you're wearing is you know nature on fabric is representing that. So your words on the open uh, are straight out of our playbook, and it's just, just it's just being who we are. It's not something we you know came up with some master strategy and even the businesses we're in. It's just who we are, doing the things we love and finding a way to, to bring them to people. And Cuz will tell you that because he was there from the first days when we were like a couple of used car salesmen, literally. <laughs> hey, Toxie, one, I was a, a CEO the last 15, 16 years of my career. And there was a book that was written called Built to Last. I don't know if you ever had a chance to read it, but it was a, mm -hmm. it was a great book based on a lot of research. And essentially what it said was, that those companies that stood the test of time, they built into their companies these like enduring core values, these things that, that were 
when they say uh, stand the test of time, it means go beyond the founding member. You, you could go away, Toxie, and these principles, this enduring core value would still be there, which drive your company. What we're going to do when we come back, I want to show sort of the family tree of your companies and talk a little bit about it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to shift gear and just talk about the outdoors in Mississippi, what it means to all of us, and some funny stories along the way that you guys have been involved in. But when we come back, we've got Toxie Hayes from uh, Mossy Oaks and his sidekick, or I would say partner in crime, Cus Strickland, and we'll, we'll continue the conversation after this break. Mississippi's Outdoors. It's Super Talk Outdoors with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi. Mississippi. Welcome back to Super Talk Outdoors. I have Cuz Strickland and Toxie Hayes from Mossy Oaks. When we went to the break, I was talking about this book called Built to Last, where these enduring when these enduring core values are built into a company, they can this company can stand the test of time. And, you know, you think about family and nature and God and outdoors and sort of what's at the base of this company called Mossy Oaks. It's amazing, really, when you think about these these values and how that's helped your company succeed. Isn't it, Toxie? Uh, yeah, it is. And it is. You, you strike the words that I mean every day. People ask what I do. And I wear a lot of hats and all, but literally I'm just trying to be sure that everything we do is around, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. And, you know, uh, we're very, very fortunate that we are a completely, totally private company with no, even no outside investors other than our family and, you know, some, some partners like Cuz and Bill. Um, and so we have that freedom. We can do what we need to do. It's all about the brand and our consumer, and we can make those kind of decisions. So it's a, it's a, we are definitely the gunslinging, entrepreneurial, willing you know bunch light on our feet and uh willing you know and and able to react quickly to things in the marketplace but still it's 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 100 since day one been about the connection to mother earth and nature and the critters and the land you know when you look at and, and the things we've evolved into they're all about that i i can remember uh for sake of definition the beginning times when we were um diversifying beyond, you know, clothes and camouflage, that hunting stuff. And it was, you know, the two things that we revealed were, you know, wildlife nutritional products, seed, you know, and stuff for your wildlife and real estate. And people said, you know, looked at me like I had a horn growing out of my head. What are you talking about? You're, a, you're in a camouflage, you know, clothing textile business. What do you mean with real estate? That makes no sense. And, and uh, seed, are you kidding me? And I was like, my, my country board logic was more like, well, without the critters, we don't have a business. And without the land and the earth up under us, we don't have the critters. So it seems to me those may be the two more important things than, you know, camouflage shirts and so forth. And I mean, from my perspective, they made the most sense in the world. In fact, some of the stuff we diversified further into was simply because we loved it so much. I mean, we sell trees. We have a, a a pretty expansive tree nursery now, but I just love the idea and we've learned to make a living out of it. And uh, it's a really good business for us. But, you know, just think about the things that we're doing. It'll be here long after we're gone. Like my dad says, I mean, there's probably not much like planting a tree to ensure that. And so, you know, and then of course we, um, I thought about, you know, just because of my neighbor, Mr. Bill Gibson, we got into the dogs, but it was, you know, because I knew he was literally the dog whisperer. And he was the right person to do it. And you start thinking, you know, this is, I know this is something we can do. We can afford it. There's a great business plan part. It's not a lot of risk. It's right here at home. And you think about adding bay to an outdoor family. And there's not much more you can do than a great dog. You think about that. <laughs> right, right. And so we did it. And, you know, the, the rest is history now. It's so popular. Yeah. And, you know, even the fact that, you know, someone said, I didn't know you were in the golf business. How does that make sense? Well, I'm in the West Point business and I'm in the Mississippi business. And when you can partner with a man like Mr. George Bryan and now have the top two golf courses in Mississippi and West Point because of it, I mean, you just got to do it. And so, especially because it was at home. It, it, and, you know, it, things just come to us. Not, not like we had a master plan, but it's all 
connected back to that central theme. Even golf, you know, you're playing nature, and uh, it just it just continues to evolve. And we, you know, we react as it appears. And uh, since we've got this team that's so committed, it's really not that hard. Uh, the last thing I'll say is forever, even from the earliest days, getting interviewed by business journal magazines or whoever, they would say, "How did you pull all this off in a sleepy little town in Mississippi?" And I would get so, I would almost get infuriated, but I'd catch myself and say, you know, there's no possible way I could have ever pulled this off except in a sleepy little town of Mississippi. That's the truth. And they just didn't understand that. But you know that. And that's why you're so proud to bring this show because I don't know that we could have done it anywhere else but where we did. Hey, so Kyle, why don't you do this? Show that photo. This is a, this is a sort of a graphic representation of the business at Mossy Oaks, and it's got all these different pieces to it. But let me tell you what, let me tell you what stood out to me, Toxie, when I, when I looked at this. What stood out to me was obviously sort of the uh, all-encompassing aspect of it, but the thing, the part of the Mossy Oak Gamekeeper that was established in 2008, I think about your, your father's inspiration, you think like conservation, land stewardship, wildlife man management, and the camaraderie that comes with outdoor pursuits. Think about all those different pieces. That's literally embedded in every single aspect of this. But the gamekeeper's part of this is is almost like it. It is almost like that is the enduring core value, isn't it? It is. It is. And Gus can speak to that. We're all the 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 whatever the top of the food chain obsession that we have is taking care of the earth and it's kind of hard to explain you know and it covers everything a lot of it is just like cuz is his biggest i can tell you right now his biggest obsession with his farm and all the stuff and the endless time and effort and and money he spends on that is because for a lot of reasons but number one is those grandkids and he lives for his family and that's the thing you know there's so many parts of that that mean a lot to us but you you've talked about you know your farm too there's no glue for a family like having that central place to convene and be with nature and yeah that means hunting too but you know for us like we're down at our place now and you know it's just uh, uh, you know it's not even about hunting we got the grandkids here and the family and just spending time outdoors um yeah but you're right the game part is probably the most defining uh piece of our brand because when you hear him talking with so much passion about this all-encompassing company I, mean, I know it gives you a sense of pride. It is, it is actually amazing how fast time flies, isn't it? It is. And I, you know, I can tell you all you need to know about Toxie because he's about as real as he gets. I had a bunch of outdoor riders we did in West Point one time, and that's how we built the company. We brought the outdoor press in. And Toxie, I tell you, that's what put the second story on the office building. But I had all these yep. riders in. And we, they wanted to meet Tox, and we went to the office, and they were asking him questions. And one of them asked him about, what, what was your mission statement? And he opened his drawer, and he was going through stuff, and he, he pulled out this tiny sheet of paper with a pencil scratch on it, and he handed it to him, and he said, that's my mission statement. And what it said was a handwritten note that said, keep the team together. Now... That just came to his mind. It wasn't like that was some event for the outdoor riders. And I saw that early on. I was blessed to be able to see him and Will Primos and the passion that they had. And for some other reason, whatever reason, I had that too. I mean, it wasn't my company, but I was like, golly, I got to be a part of that because that love of the, the hunting and fishing was just instilled in me. So I've had the luxury of watching two of the greatest entrepreneurs there is, build a company out of stuff they love. So, man, you talk about divine intervention. That's that's what it was. <laughs> I talk about divine intervention all the time. But, you know, when you think about the, the conversation I had with Brad Ferris and Jimmy Primos and then, of course, Will and then you two and others like you, there are, we're lucky, aren't we, because in this state to have so many outdoor ambassadors that aren't just representatives inside the state, but literally to the nation and to the world. How important is that? You know, it's very important. When we started the television show, Toxie wrote me in and said, here's what we got to do. And since I've been running a video camera, he's like, you're the guy. And I ain't scared. We'll take that on. <laughs> 
but but I can remember going when hunting the country hit its mark. We were the highest rated outdoor show on the Nashville network, and I went to a production meet, a uh, producers meeting up there, and the fact that we were from Mississippi, uh, that didn't get us a lot of respect. But you know what? As time went on, and we we were ranked the best show again and the best show again. Throwing that Mississippi card out there was something that kind of made us proud. I know it made him proud, me too, because it's like kind of enjoyed being the underdog. But uh, Miss, Mississippi's always been first and foremost in our mind, I promise you. Hey, one other one other thing, just to, one other thing, building off of something Toxie said a second ago, because, you know, I was a uh, weekend before last, last weekend we were fishing, but weekend before last we were up at the camp uh, doing food plots. And this whole notion of, you know, the hunting part of it, certainly it's fun and it's important and you create great memories and all of that, but it's really the overall experience. I mean, it's the, I mean, to me, working on the farm and doing food plots and having my, my son-in-law and his father and my grandson there with me all at the same time, man, that's what life's all about. We've got less than a minute, but just a quick comment on that, cuz. Well, I, I can't, I tell people all the time, Tox is going through this right now. You don't think you can love anything more than your kids and you have grandkids and you hit another gear. Uh, same, it, it's, it's pretty unbelievable and you want to expose them to all that. You really do and that's very important. When we come back, we'll build off that theme of family and friends a little bit more. This is Toxie Hayes and Cuz Strickland from Mossy Oaks. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back to Super Talk Outdoors, the second edition of Super Talk Outdoors. I have Cuz Strickland and my friend Toxie Hayes from Mossy Oaks joining us. And when we went to break, we were really talking about this overall experience around the outdoors. It's not just about the hunting or the fishing. It's just experience of being together in this incredible nature. And man, Toxie, I you never get old of, of it, do you? Actually, the older you get, the more appreciative you get of it, isn't it? That's, isn't that true? I think so. No doubt about it. You know, at it, it, the core of all of us is that connection with the earth. I mean, we're a part of it. You think about that in the really, really big picture of things. And so all of this stuff we talked about, you were just before the break talking about what a, I mean, the whole gamekeeper thing, and you talked about, you know, going to your place and having your kids and grandkids, everybody working together on the place. There's just, it, you know, beyond the superficial part of, you know, we're making a place to go hunting this fall. It's just that connection. And I think it's the most, the fastest growing, most popular thing in all of the outdoors now is being a quote unquote gamekeeper. And it's because of uh, the people, a lot of times people don't even realize how strong that tie is to the earth that we all have. And I just kind of cry for people who don't understand it or don't get experience in them, not to knock the metro life, but live in a city in such a way that they don't appreciate that. I, I wish that uh, we could get that to more people. They don't have to own their own place whatsoever because really being a gamekeeper is more of a mindset than, you know, I own land or I work on land in particular, but I just think that it's what we're put here for. You know, it's just, you know, it's our calling. It is our calling, man. We were out there, we were out there. We've, we planned the last, last eight food plots in the rain and we didn't get stuck to lot just before the last one. But you know, people who don't know Delta gumbo, they need to experience it once in their life. Don't they cuz? Yeah, that's uh... a, <laughs> That's that's a whole that stuff came from like Mars or something. You, you can use it for bricks or granite or whatever. I, I feel for you. Yeah, when I when it gets wet, you know, if it's uh, if it's got a, uh, a really packed uh, surface, if it gets wet, I call it uh, let's say ice mud <laughs> because if there's oh, any slant yep. to it whatsoever, you're just going to slide off, which is what happened to us. But but you know what? Even in those moments. We were lucky we didn't break anything, but it, even in those moments, it's just great. It's great stories to tell later, isn't it, Cuz? Well, you got to have those. People always talk about, you know, their their young kids and grandkids are always on the phone. Well, that's just kind of part of their world now. Like we had the drive-in. So, what do you got to do? Is you got to offer them something in exchange for that? 
So I'm, I'm big on making the list like, hey, Saturday, we're going to do this, this, and this. And you got to keep them busy. And they love it. They love taking on responsibility. You know, I, I got a, a 12-year-old that's running a tractor, you know, very safe and all that. And the other one's sand throwing seed. And when they get through their little chest is stuck out, you know, it's like, that's how you learn to be, you know, good people and little men and great. You know, my granddaughter who just started at Mississippi State, that's how old I am. One time, and Toxie gave me advice. He said, spend more time on your pond than you do your food plots. And me and my granddaughter at the time, she was about seven or eight, caught a bunch of catfish. We had a fish fry that night. We were sitting there and she said, hey, Pop. And I said, what? She said, we caught the fish and then we cleaned the fish. Me and you cooked the fish. She said, that's really cool, isn't it? <laughs> and I was like, that just flew all over me. You know, she's not a big hunter, but she gets it. And that's all any of us ever want is to, hey, this is where food comes from. You know, yeah. spread your brow and stuff like that. That's why it's been so fun working at Mossy Oak. That's not like some marketing poise, just like he said earlier. That's how we roll. That's, that's just fun to be around. Toxie, I was at my place in the Delta last year. We went down to the corner where we'd left some corn, and I had my three-year-old grandson with me, and I picked a, a corn, and I started to peel it back and revealed the corn underneath, and he screams, corn! He didn't realize what was going to be <laughs> happening, and I got it on video, and it's priceless. It's literally, I, I posted it, and people just reacted to it and loved it, but every moment like that when you're around your grandkids or, your, in your case, your sons, it's, it's just another memory, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I just, um, I, we just feel like, I mean, we talk about it a lot. It's in, it's in all the things we do. It's the businesses, but I just feel like, you know, uh, I guess two messages to people out there I'd say is one, we just, we, we're more concerned with being a good example than trying to be preachy about anything necessarily. And I think that for all of us that care greatly for the outdoors is through your actions and what you do and how you live your life, be a good example. That's the best way to attract people to what was going on and uh, win them over and help them see the, the way forward in, in being in the outdoors. And the second thing I would say would be, uh, don't ever compare. You said, you hit on the word a minute ago, and I think cuz too, that makes our life more complete than anything probably is that we're always grateful. I mean, whether you have four acres or 40 acres or 400 acres, it really doesn't matter. Just to be grateful to be able to get outdoors in today's world and get to that place with your family, with your friends, and have that peace. When you just look around just a little bit, one thing modern media does let you see what's going on around the world. Uh, and if you can't be grateful to live in Mississippi and have the heritage and the outdoor opportunities we do, and honestly, uh, I, even since a kid, I've been so proud of how we've managed that. Even, you know, politics get in the way a little bit, but for the most part, I'd say we are a shining example of all states in the country. And, what the, you know, our natural resources is who we are, uh, you know, uh, more than any state just about, you know. Well, if you think about that theme song for this show, One Mississippi by Steve Azar, you know, it, it, you know, when we're in the outdoors together, no matter what our disagreements might be when we're not in the outdoors, when we get to the outdoors together, it's the one thing that kind of brings us all together. You know, one of the things that's interesting, because, you know, I went to your sort of catalog of videos that go way back, and you've done a great job of sort of make you know, arranging them in a way that allows us to, you know, as, you know, consumers to go take a look at it on your website. And so there are so many stories. I mean, I, I, I was reminded, because I do remember this, the, the whole water buck episode, because when you had to retrieve the buck in your long johns and the fun people had with that. But, but Toxie, when you look back, how do you decide what, experience with cuz sticks out the most i you know uh, that's like asking me you know what stands out the most with my dad or what stands up most with my kids and you know those closest to me it's hard to say um there's a big combination of something like that early on that one is a landmark for both of us uh forever but honestly the thing that i would say um that's more important than an individual event is the fact that in today's world, especially when COVID hit and um, is that relationship that's just like, just as close to unconditional as you can get. We can go without seeing each other and it's a week or a couple of weeks or just a day or two, it doesn't make any difference. 
and we pick right up where we left off. And for me, that's so, I mean, I can't even put a value on that. And the, 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 the love and the chemistry and the bond from all those early days is completely intact, no matter what. That to me is what I would say is the biggest thing of all. And you just don't get that with everybody. Quite honestly, I don't get that with everybody. You strive for it, but with, with me and Cuz, it's it's something that was just, I don't know. He knows it too, you know, without saying a word. It was intended to be somehow, some way, just a long time ago before we got here. Texas, when you say uh, so, excuse me. Cuz, what would you add to that? <clears throat> I can't add much to it. I mean, we've had so many, but I can tell you when I made up my mind about taxis, when I first went to work there, we were struggling. I mean, we were, me and Bill Sugg and Bob Dixon were having contests to see who could stay in the cheapest motel. It, it was crazy. Um, and my wife got seriously ill. We went through a bout of cancer. I'm going to try to get through this without getting shook up. And, I mean, new company, fledgling. I mean, we didn't have any money. And Toxie, he would call me. Every, we stayed eight weeks in the hospital at Jack's. He'd call every other day. How, what do you need? What's going on? And then him and Bill Suggs showed up one day there with a sock full of change for those vending machines in the hospital. And I told Pam, we got through this. I said, he may fire me, but I said, I can tell you one thing. I'm never going to work for another person. Stuff like that, you just, and I'm not sucking up because he's sitting there. I'm just telling you, that kind of stuff's impactful. And when you see it, you got to know that's a defining moment. You know, I often talked about this book called Built to Last on Kofu. I was a CEO of the last 15 and 16 years of my career. And uh, this whole notion of how to build a company that lasts, Mossy Oak sort of fits that mold, which is build into the company these enduring core values that will really stand the test of time. And think about Walmart and how Walmart was built. When Sam Walton passed away, Walmart continued to move forward because they built into this company these enduring core values that really help the company survive long after their sort of transformational leader had passed. Um, but you know, that's the key to success today. You have those, when you have those enduring core values, in Mossy Oates' case, this whole notion of, you know, saying, saying sort of pure to the notion of you know, creating a company that, that protects the environment and, and, and believes in conservation, all these connections, whether it be real estate or you know, seeds or trees or whatever. It's amazing what you can build when you build a company like that. And it, Mossy Oaks, my, my guess is it was built to last. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Cuz Strickland and Toxie Hayes from Mossy Oaks. See you after this break. We live in one of the best places in America to enjoy the outdoors. So let's talk about it. It's Super Talk Outdoors with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi. It's cut through walls and fall football. A Gulf Coast sunset. Welcome back to Super Talk Outdoors. I have my friends Cubs Strickland and Toxie Hayes from Mossy Oaks. One of the great things about doing this show is the opportunity to be, be able to share my passion with people who have a similar passion, maybe more so. And to hear the stories and hear the dedication. You know, the goal of this show is not to not to try to paint a certain picture. It's just to share the passion for the outdoors in this great state. And man, if I do that and we do that together, we will have inspired you to maybe remind you. Sometimes you get moving so fast you forget how important it is. But but anyway, you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't come back for a second, Toxie, and just ask you about your father and how he's doing, the inspiration he's been to you and your and your kids and now your grandkids. How's he doing these days? Oh, uh, you know, just the fact that he's 91 and he's here, he's doing great. Um, you know, he's really feeble uh, physically, but uh, man, his mind, his spirit, uh, his sense of humor, that wit, that classic Mr. Fox wit is still there. And I think the I don't know. There's so many things I could say about him. And it's, it, it sounds kind of prejudiced or self-serving because he's my dad, but he's a dad to so many people. I mean, he is so many people that are in the company, in the brand that, and even outside of that, that maybe have already lost their dad. It's amazing. I mean, looking at cuz, I mean, he's like another dad to cuz now. Uh, and he just serves that role. He's so 
um, unselfish, so selfless. So, I mean, he, what keeps him going at 91 is thinking about what he can do for everybody else. And so it's just such a good example for everyone to go by. And uh, especially when you see the way all our family uh, connects with him and puts him up on a pedestal and he doesn't even like, you know, having that done. Um, yeah. I saw, I, saw an inter I read an interview with your, with your son, Daniel, where uh, Daniel was asked who was his hero. And he said his papa was his hero, Mr. Fox to everyone else. But cause um, you know, obviously you heard what he just said that he, you know, he looks at you as a son as well. What would you say about Mr. Fox? <clears throat> you know, Mr. Fox is one of those, and I, I say this in all honesty, when you're confronted with a situation and, you know, it's like, man, don't answer that pointed email real fast. You think it through a little bit. And I'm always like, what would Mr. Fox do? Because you, you look up Southern gentleman in the dictionary and should have his picture there because he's always so grounded and so wise. Yeah. You know, big, big difference in being highly educated and having wisdom. So, uh, and uh, man, I'd pick him up. I got so many Fox stories. We could do the whole nother segment on that. But I always thought to myself, you know, what would Mr. Fox do? That's, uh, that's pretty comforting. My father, my father, who God bless him, died when he was 44. But my father used to say there was nothing more powerful than practical wisdom. There's nothing yeah. more powerful. Because yeah. tell me about soul. Uh, Go ahead, Taxi. Yeah, talk to you. Oh, said, no, he's right. He was talking about Mr. Fox when he said that practical wisdom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell me about soul, cuz. You know, uh, we, we, we don't dive in politics too much here. Toxie said we try to be an example, and we do. But sometimes being an example means you got to lead. And we do so much nobody ever knows about, ever. Wounded veterans, we've been doing stuff for decades with wounded veterans. And I was talking to Taxi one day. I said, we need to do something for our law enforcement. I, I've got a bunch of friends in that, including game wardens and stuff, and how tough the times are budget-wise. So we came up with so Sportsman Organized for Law Enforcement, just to raise money. Because there's already groups in place, Spirit of Blue, like all they do is buy equipment where they need it. The number one requested thing in law enforcement that they have to buy their own is tourniquets. I was blown away when I learned that. Anyway, we started so Governor Bryant helped us. As a matter of fact, Governor Friel Bryant was the first guy to write a check to Seoul. Uh, we've had fundraisers at the Foxhole Shootout. It's so much, when you see good people come together for the right reason, something that will start again right here at Mossy Oak. It just makes you proud. We're having a big fundraiser October the 29th up in uh, Corneth, auction and all funds. And all that money goes to three groups, Cops, Spirit of Blue, another group that does training. We just give the money to them. And it just makes you feel good. And again, that's a Mississippi-based thing that's raising money for law enforcement. Can't talk yeah. about it a lot. Some people get offended. But, man, what a right thing to do. I'm very proud of that. And I know Taxi is. Toxie, we have a hard close to the show. It's about to come to an end, but when you look to the future, what's your thoughts about the future of Mossy Oaks? Oh, I couldn't be more optimistic. Uh, we've got so much of the energy coming today is from a younger generation that's really connected with what's going on and helping to recruit uh, people to the outdoors and help us form decisions, not only from you know the products and the things we're in, but quite honestly, the very, very complicated marketing uh you know scenario we have today and i could not be prouder because honestly you know as cuz brought out the best in me as a partner the that younger generation uh is helping bring the best out in all of us you know kind of old fogies today too so i would be worried about our future if i didn't have that because uh you know cousin and i are moving on but they, we've got a great great uh young management team and you know family I know the challenge as well as the CEO of a digital media company, the last part of my career, understand it well. There are challenges and incredible opportunities and all of that. But anyway, Cus Strickland, Toxie Hayes from Mossy Oaks, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ricky. And have a great day. We'll see you next Monday.